Now our next speaker is Dr. Ram. He was a director of Indian Institute of Integrative Medicine at uh, Jorhat. He just retired and currently he is a CSIR advisor for and he is the one who is doing clinical Dr. Trials. Dr. You, you have sent me from Jammu to Jorhat. <laughs> Sorry, Jammu. Jorhat. I, <laughs> I was talking about long Jorhat. Long Very long journey. <laughs> okay, okay. Sorry, Jammu. Uh, triple I am Jammu. Sorry for that. And he is, he, he work on vitamin B12 by some very tough problem at Cambridge University. Then he was in the industry like Nicholas Piramal, then he was in National Institute of Immunology, Delhi. And then he was, you know, working with us for quite some time. And he has done a lot of work on medicinal chemistry. And he's specific to mention here that his association with Cadilla Pharmaceutical in clinical trial of Sepsivac to mitigate COVID-19 with all aims, in Institute of Medical Science, BHU, and other institutes. And it reflects his dedication to the welfare of mankind that he has offered himself to do this job. And I'm sure you will listen more and then you will know what kind of work he is doing in this area. Dr. Ram, it is for you. Thank you, Dr. Yadav. If uh, somebody can load my presentation. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think uh, you heard the previous speaker giving you about the knowledge about the virus, how it came, how it spread, what's likely to happen. What I will going to tell you what actually we have done on this virus. Um, when the virus was uh, kind of COVID-19 was detected in December, uh, it took almost one month to figure out what is going on. And then we had a meeting of directors meeting in Goa in the month of end of January. And I think we quickly realized that we have some serious problem in our hand. And being a very diverse organization, the CSIR is, uh, we uh, decided that we will have multi-pronged strategy to deal with this problem. And uh, times like this, uh, people realize the value of what I call investment in science. Okay. Of late, you must have been hearing in last 10, 15 years that people in New Delhi keep asking scientists, what is return on investment? Okay. All those people who are talking return on investment now hiding and looking for scientists and science to deliver something. You know, every day I get phone call from top politicians, ministers, and they are all afraid to die. And same ministers and politicians, when we went to funding, they said, you know, what, what you people are doing. So I think this is the time that we make you realize that country like ours, despite being a very poor country in 1947, continued to make investment in science. And we, our early politician used to call it investment in future. And that is how these uh, wonderful laboratories system was set up. So I think times like this, people ponder that why it is important to have a consistent, regular investment in creating knowledge. Because the, the, the greatest and the most powerful country is right now on the knees. You can see that. With all the resources available to them, all the militaries and power. So I think this is the understanding we should have that science is something. And I believe that science will find solution to this problem also. And with this, so we decided in CSIR that how to deal with this. And we kind of uh, 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 divided ourselves in five different verticals, okay, because of the strength of the organization. And we decided that a strategy group will be created, made up of eight directors. And we, we have been meeting for the last four months every day from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m the DG of CSIR and all seven directors. And I have been coordinating all this effort. So my role is basically to driving all the programs that are happening in CSIR. So that is how we have been monitoring very closely that what should be done. So we divided into five verticals. The first vertical is basically molecular and digital surveillance about the knowledge about the virus. Uh, 
how do we do the surveillance and now we are realizing i think in this month that how important surveillance is so i will give you a little brief background of what we have done in surveillance the second vertical is basically uh, testing and uh, developing new diagnostic kits both from the viral side and from the host side the third major vertical is therapeutics and uh, vaccines effort so i'll give you some snapshot uh, what we have been doing and fourth vertical but very important was the medical devices and ppes because uh, now our situation is better if you remember month of uh, february or january there was serious shortage of ppes and uh, ventilators and all these devices in this country and we realized that you know we how dependent we are on the outside world for these devices and doctors and medical staff nurses you know they were front line people were exposed so that area we decided and the, the fifth area that we decided was to deal with supply chain so whatever you want to do in the time of crisis you know i'm sure uh, people who works in pharmaceutical company and corporation will understand the value of supply chain which in public system we never realize we take everything for granted that you know somebody taxpayer will pay pay for us and we will get it whatever we want to do right so supply chain management in terms of creating programs was a major issue so we decided that and using new iit platforms how do we deal with the supply chain or particularly for example you want to manufacture a particular drug or vaccine so i'll give you a little steps out of that so if you can go to the first slide next slide yeah so i think this uh, my previous speaker may have covered but i will just say, tell you that what were kind of uh, challenges that we had at that time i am talking about now the first month we had very limited diagnostic uh, capability and capacity no point of care diagnostic no vaccine no therapeutic and we had a very highly infectious virus this virus is much more infected than its previous sister which is cov1 which came in 2003 and this virus has some special characteristic which no other previous virus had it so there, there is something we are dealing with we should not just deal with that we are dealing with another virus it will become seasonal all this wishful thinking let me tell you this this virus is a very different kind of virus its biology is very different immunology is different and every day we are learning like today itself the paper has been published in a top journal that it says that very fast we are losing the anti creation of body to create antibodies within one month we are losing when you challenge it so anybody who is hoping that some vaccines will come and all this i will temper that uh, expectation it has been 40 years since hiv came and we have zero vaccine at this stage so developing vaccines for virus is not as easy as it is there are other approaches that we have to take like for example dealing with the immune system how do we deal with th1 th2 responses how do we deal with other situation that's much more effective strategy and of course therapeutic so hopefully we have moved across and of course now we are realizing very quickly that it is not one disease there are two diseases that we are dealing with the first disease which is for only one week seven days first seven days when virus is multiplying that's one part that has to be dealt with differently then there is a second week when virus has nothing to do with it your immune system is destroying your organs basically and some of the data that is available to us is is pretty frightening data we recently had a discussion with king's college team on discussing uh, dr moro gika he used to be director general of icgb and some of the data that he showed us from the autopsies of the dead people that the lungs have been actually virtually destroyed so whatever lung capacity that you lose because of this infection even if you recover you have lost that part of the lung forever for your life or the brain part that you have like for example a stroke so i think there are serious manifestation that lot of damage that is happening which is irreversible to the organ so we should take it very seriously and that is why it's very important that we take all the precaution that we take don't take it lightly that you know another seasonal virus and all that that that's not the situation we are dealing with something very very different so uh, so here in this uh, vertical i think what uh, what our strength was and that is how we started working on it i think this part has already been covered with this virus came and all that that doesn't matter anymore that's a more academic interest where it came where it is gone is all you know all this uh, politician to bicker about but reality is it is there right so can you go to next slide please uh, yeah so these are the verticals that i talked about 
And good thing that we did in the, that week itself, we decided that we will not do anything which a, where a corporate partner is not there. So CSR is not doing any project where industry is not in partnership. And the right side, you see the industry which is working with, working with us. Reliance Industries is working, Tata Sons, Intel, CC, TCS, CIPLA, Sun Pharma, Arvindo, Cadilla, Bharat Biotech, Sinjin, Bail, BL. And this list goes on. This is almost 15 days old slide. So all things that we are doing, there is a, because we very quickly, I realized and I told everybody that without industry, you will not, you will only keep making noises. Okay, you will not move an inch in the real space. So this is very important. And luckily, these industry came, they came as a partner. And also, some of the large industries came as a large corporate social responsibility fund. Like Tata Sons has given close to three to four crore rupees to us as a CSR responsibility. Reliance, all these companies have given money from CSR fund. At the same time, they have in licensed technology. I will briefly talk about it. So this is something very important, the way we took approach and the rest of the people. Can you go to next, please? Yeah, so next. Yeah, so here this, I think this is, a, this is covered. The briefly, I will tell you that so far, this is a little old slide. We have done genome sequences of 500 viruses. And those have been deposited to international repository. And from those viruses, we are learning a little bit about the mutations, but the most importantly, what we are doing using those viruses, we have now set up the uh, varicell in vitro cultures in three of CSR laboratories where we can test substances for uh, antiviral activities. We are in the process of setting up animal model using those virus resources. And since we have industry partners, so we are trying to set up a public private partnership where this in vitro phenotypic cell-based animal model, all this can be done in a private environment and it will be provided to everybody as a service mode rather than, you know, you know, getting done, done things in a government laboratory at its own dimension. So that is how we are, we are working with a Bangalore-based company to create a public-private partnership for this resource. Next. Next slide, please. Yeah. So this is the, I think I briefly mentioned about this Tata Sons uh, and, and, and because of our effort, Tata, Tata has have decided to create a new company called Tata Health. You will hear very soon the launching of this company that will focus on the, based on the, our diagnostic kit that we have given them and that is that work is happening. Next, please. Next slide. Can I change slide from here? Yeah. So the, 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 the second part was that we decided in the month of February that, you know, if you remember, there were a lot of shortage of testing labs in the country. So CSR, 14 CSR labs are now day-to-day -day testing. We have tested close to 1.5 lakh sample in last one month, one and a half month. A lab at Hyderabad, Chandigarh, Jammu, my own lab. We have tested close to 20,000 samples. So what we are doing, we are working with the medical colleges and government system, respective state government. And since many of us have BSL-3 facility, BSL-2 facility, and we are offering those facility and providing sampling. And this, this number is old. This number should be 1.5 lakhs, the 40,000 that you are showing because this is the 15 days old slide. And also what we are doing, we are training people to do testing, RT-PCR testing. So we have trained close to 250 people now, young people across the country who can go to private lab, government lab and do the RT-PCR testing using a standard protocol. Next, please. Next slide. Yeah, so this is one technology that we have developed. Our lab IGIB in Delhi has developed. This is using a CRISPR-based uh, uh, simpler kit to detect the virus, as you see here. And this technology has been licensed to Tata Sons and they have done testing in there and they have taken this basically for the purpose of that they want to screen all of their employees in Tata Group. That is the idea of using this uh, simple kit, 30 minute test, you can test your positivity and negativity. And this currently has been tested on as a prototype, we have done the hundreds of sample we have done and we are hoping to get any day the ICMR approval and the production facility already has been created by Tata's separate company has been created. And very soon you will have this uh, point of care diagnostic kit available to the country. 
So this is one of the major highlight of CSR contribution in this effort. Next, please. Next slide. Yeah, this is the second technology which we have done with the company, Biocon company called Syngene. This is a very interesting platform where we are using barcoding and sequencing together. And we have a platform where we can test 50 to 70,000 sample per cycle. So for example, if there's a hotspot area where a large number of people are infected, you can take this set up this platform and you can do this test and you can 50 to 60,000 sample together. And now this uh, is actually a prototype has been developed by Sinjin with the, our lab in Hyderabad, CCMP. And hopefully, I am hoping within a month, this will get approval from the regulatory system so that we can pan out in an area where the hotspot of the country. Or for example, companies can take these system and then screen their own people you know, to prevent uh, sort of a community spread. Next, please, next slide. Yeah, this is the uh, diagnostic kit my own lab has developed. This is a RT lamp. This is a very simple technique where you don't use RT-PCR machine. So as simple as that, you don't, you just simply need a heat block, 60 degree temperature, and you use four uh, PCR primer. And this, uh, we have out license to Reliance Industries and Reliance Industry is, has set up the cost at 99 rupees. Mr. Mukhe Sambani himself is supervising this project and he has set up that he will provide this kit at 99 rupees per test. And it, it is 30 minutes you can test whether you are positive or negative. This is also prototype has been developed. The Alliance is working with the, its own industry system and we are waiting for ICMR approval, which should come maybe a week's time or 10 days time, it should come. So these are the two, three very important technology that CSI has developed. These are all our own patents, but we are making sure that we are not making these technology, giving these technology on exclusive basis to any industry. So other industry is welcome to come and take these technology because these are developed by taxpayers money. So it cannot be given to one industry on an exclusive basis. Next slide. Now, this is the third vertical, which is uh, drugs and repurposing of drugs. Next, please. Yeah, so what we decided at the beginning that, you know, obviously it is not possible to develop new drug in that short period of time. So we selected 21 drugs, which are potential antiviral substances or are in clinical trial for any viruses, for particularly positive RNA viruses. And those 21 drugs we decide distributed to about five or six chemistry based lab, Hyderabad, Pune, Jammu, Lucknow, Bhavnagar. And we synth developed the synthetic method at least at hundreds of gram scale in the lab. So for example, Remdesivir, before Remdesivir are launched, IICT Hyderabad had Remdesivir synthesis. My lab also has a Remdesivir synthesis, Abipiravir, Unifiravir. Uh, Arbidol, all, all other uh, drugs. So 21 drugs we have developed synthesis available to us. And then we started working with partner. For example, this is one for the, uh, this uh, heavy per hour. Our partner is Cipla. Together with Cipla, we went to drug controller. Cipla conducted a trial and Glenmark also conducted a trial and Cipla got approval to market it. And, and Cipla is now selling it actually at one third of the cost, that's what their target is, that they will provide Fabi per hour at one third of the cost, which Glenmar and other companies are providing. So I think that's the advantage that we are doing with the, uh, with the bringing competition into the system. Next slide. Yeah, so this is the, the, the Remdesivir. And uh, because of the intervention of CSIR, we developed a cost-effective method and demonstration for pharma companies were run by IIIM uh, and IICT both. And this technology has been out licensed to Mylan, Luxai Life Sciences and Cipla. So anybody who's coming and we are helping them giving this technology. And these are most, these are the people who have licensed from the Gilead, the originator Gilead and they are producing it. So I hope the cost of Remdesivir also will go, come down as these new processes in India start producing in large scale. Next, please. So these are the uh, some of the top drug that we have identified and we are putting in the pipeline that first one is already in the phase two trial with CDRA Lucknow and a company. This is Arbidol. These, the uh, niclosamide, we are working with the King's College London and a company and very soon a phase two trial will be started. In fact, this application is now being prepared. And then we have the 
four combination trial which is going to start in fact this week we are hoping to get dcgi approval where we are testing so my approach has been that you know only antiviral will not help only immune system directed things will not help so we created innovative combinations to deal with the situation so the three combination that we are going to start trial is uh, favipiravir and colchicine uh, arbidol and colchicine and nifomastat and 5 amino lavendic acid these are the three new combination which csir is working with industry fortunately we got a industry partner and we are putting 50 50% uh, money and this uh, in fact today or tomorrow we are hoping to get approval and then this trial will start next next slide and uh, of course this is the uh, ccmb the antiviral test that system that we have developed inactivated virus for the vaccine so industry partner are waiting here which are working with us in terms of bharat biotech vns biotech esteem research so many companies are working with us in this step. next next slide yeah so this is the uh, collaboration very early on i must thank uh, dr khamar who is sitting here that we very quickly i think in the month of i think january or february itself we came together and analyzed this that this is something sitting on in our hand this is already approved from dam negative sepsis the sepsis event the mw uh, product and then we quickly created a project and then very fast we went to dcgi and we got three approval one phase two approval two phase three approval which are written here and i am hoping that you know we are almost uh, at the end of the phase two approval which is for serious patient and we we will in the process of analyzing this data and very soon we will go back to and in this uh, effort what we decided was to create a benchmark that these trials are done in the top hospital of the country aims delhi is involved aims bhopal is involved and pgi chandigarh is involved now three more aims are joining uh, nagpur bhubneswar and uh, raipur so i think this is the this is the uh, kind of a partnership that has happened and created a benchmark for us and i think this is the one direction i am i am more hopeful to deal with this disease because rather than going for the vaccines and looking for a specific activity and the problem that vaccines have this is the uh, this is another way of dealing with immunotherapy this is it's called basically immunotherapeutic approach to the virus is to basically kick start the th1 protective response of the human body which itself should deal with this and of course associated il6 related damage that is happening so this is something we are all looking forward it that this data gets completed and we, we get into the larger trials next please yeah this is something very historic i must tell you that this i take very pride and i was directly involved in this this is a, as of you know in 2015 india created a new type of drug category under dcgi called phytopharmaceutical drug okay and this is based on what we call us botanical drug which was created in 2005 this is the new dawn in drug discovery other than a small molecule and biological here basically you have a plant product you do not have to go to the single molecule you can use the advantage of because many of these plant product work synergistically and additively and this is the uh, long term demand that you know we should be allowed to develop these drug provided that the cmc and gms uh, gmp all is followed so this partnership actually we started 5 year ago with sun pharma and icgv and it started working on dengue virus this is a material and triple im jammu did the almost all ind enabling studies was done and we had fortunately completed phase 1 trial for dengue and then you know dengue virus is also positive rna virus and although the mechanism of entry of dengue virus and this virus corona virus are different but once inside the cell the endocytosis going to ribosome uh, n link uh, protein processing everything is same so quickly we tested this in outside the country for corona virus and then we went to drug controller since phase 1 data was already there we got phase 2 data this is also happening in eight hospital right now in india all over india and we have almost completed 80% of the patient recruitment and maybe in couple of weeks time we will have data i think this is a discovery made in india developed in india and first phytopharmaceutical of india i think this is the dream of ramnath chopra 
in 1930. And that is how we created this institute. So I take special pride in this that I was associated with this bringing first phytopharmaceutical of India into clinical trial. So I'm hoping that, you know, this will also come into picture. Next. Next slide. Yeah, so we are doing these, uh, these also we then partnered with the IUS ministry to help them. And these uh, trials are happening in terms of the additive trial, whether some of these very important plants, particularly my hope is on Glyceriza glabra and Vilenia somnifera. And again, indirectly, uh, Cadilla is involved in helping us conducting these trials all over India. So you will hear about these trials also. Next. This trial is happening on uh, this, uh, you must be hearing about plasma therapy, conversion plasma. So we are doing, we, 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 we don't go by, somebody said, you know, plasma therapy is working. So we decided that we must conduct trial. So our lab in Calcutta, IICB, medical colleges and other, this trial is happening and DCGI has approved this trial and this trial also going on for validation of plasma therapy. Next. Hospital assist dividers, next please. Here we have made several interventions. The most important intervention I will tell you is this non-invasive supplementary ventilator. This is a very portable device. For example, if you are in home and you, your oxygen level goes down below 94% and you are suddenly panicking, because nobody wants to go to hospital these days. Nobody wants to go to hospital. The hospitals are like going to death, right? Getting infections, dying there because of lack of facility. And so we developed this device. In fact, I'm very pleased to say yesterday it got regulatory approval and uh, Hyderabad this hospital placed the first order of 25 ventilators, very simple device. It gives you oxygen within, within two or three infusion, your oxygen level goes back to 98% to 100%. So, and in that process, your lung have capacity to go back and you know, most of the damage can be repaired. So it's very interesting, uh, CSR, uh, and a lot of companies are involved in this who, are, who will uh, send it. Oxygen enrichment unit, where we can convert to 60 to 70% oxygen from air. We can use membrane filter. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Yeah. So here, uh, I, will, I will not uh, take too much time. I'll only talk about our lab in Bangalore, National Aerospace Laboratory, which has nothing to do with the disease. They came forward in three months ago that they will manufacture PPE for hospitals, doctors, and nurses. Because in the space area, they use these very high sophisticated gowns and to protect these uh, pilots and other people. So they had technology. And today I'm pleased to say that with this technology, one company in Bangalore is making 50,000 ventilator every week. And their capacity is going to be one lakh per week. So I think this is a, we take special pride in getting that this technology came from CSIR and it's very cheap and it is being uh, uh, bought by all hospitals, private sector, everybody through the HNL system of the government of India bidding system. Next, please. Of course, there are a lot of things I don't have time, so I'm not telling you about everything. Next. Yeah, so these are some of the, now we are working on a project and we are discussing today. Can you go to next, please? Yeah, so we are working now these makeshift hospitals. So we are developing now, we have a technology where within a week we can set up a hospital where 100 to 200 people can be managed. At least the mild to severe patient, mild to moderate patient can be managed in this. So I think we are, LNT is our partner, Larson and Kumro and Tata project. Both of them are coming together with us and this technology will very soon be launched. Next, please. Next. Next, this is the supply chain. So basically here what we have developed, we have developed an uh, online portal and apps where we can follow the key starting material of particular drug, how, which is coming from abroad, which is coming from India, and this database we are generating and providing to industry partners and ourselves, our lab. So I think this, is a, this will be the first of a kind effort in India where this kind of crisis happens because two lessons we have learned that over the last 15 years, we virtually outsource all the drug manufacturing to outside India. And we became people who will make tablet capsules and injections. So we became basically from the manufacturer of drug, 
we became formulator of the drug this is the harsh reality and there is a reason for that business reason and i think government is now realizing that what kind of horrible mistakes they have done not promoting api manufacturing in the country so we are discussing now a new policy has been announced by department of pharmaceuticals in consultation with us 6000 crore they have allocated 103 drugs they have identified and particularly drugs which are produced by fermentation you know drugs like rifampicin rifampicin and rifamycin now we are importing from outside for to work process that's a you know we used to produce in pune facility and you know even i think that kerala used to produce or something so so something like that this is useful next please yeah this app this app very interesting app that we have created for farmers to get connected to industry so farmer produce farmer knows which industry need these product industry need which product is lying where so this is i think very large use more than i think uh, this 35000 is very old figure now more than a lakh uh, people are now connected through this uh, app next next slide please yeah so these are the thing this slide i made especially for all of you what hard lesson we have learned during pandemic and this we must ponder over it if we don't ponder it we will have bigger problem in the bhai first is that pharmaceutical manufacturing base of india has shrunk to alarming level and shifted to china south east asia and cis countries so two things have happened medicines may not remain affordable for indian population which was the dream of a uh, whole setting up pharma base and i think that was the dream of founder of kerala pharmaceutical which i had a privilege to meeting couple of time i think i personally came to ahmedabad and met and he was actually associated with the research council of my institute for many many years so he was like a guardian to us and i think that dream is in the danger the second dream jobs good synthetic organic chemistry people don't have job because manufacturing base has shifted so wuhan has more indian uh, organic chemistry graduate working than in india so i think all the uh, synthetic chemistry ability which people like dr yadav built in this country is on serious danger i am i'm warning it this is a problem okay this slide i made is specifically here second is medical devices diagnostic sector we are totally dependent for outside country every component every ic every piece once you start assembling these you know tata realizing tata realizing everything is coming from outside even a, even a capacitor is coming from outside so this is all imported and we are sleeping nicely that you know we are the, you know manufacturing base of the world i think we have to get out of that sleep see the uh, writing on the wall this is the serious problem so we are we are now in discussion with niti ayog to have the policy to support a startup and bigger company to get into diagnostic space the third the most important you know i'm telling you all the story that this drug we are repurposing this vaccine we are repurposing except sepsivac and phytopharmaceutical which are indian innovator product everything is from outside the country we have no contribution in remdesivir or favipiravir because these are discovered so i think the discovery base of this country has close to come to zero almost zero those are small molecule we have become imitator of the outside world somebody launches antibody we start making in our country when are we going to discover our own antibodies after 70 years having such a robust power manufacturing base everything so i think there is a message in this that we cannot keep on copying and hoping that western world will keep discovering drugs and vaccines for us we have to do now we are adult country we should be able to do this and for that there are two problems there is no translation expertise you will have lot of professors will give you a lecture here but if you go in the lab they don't there is zero translation facility if you have a molecule and if you have a good ic50 and engagement with target they will say i have discovered a drug they even don't understand what it takes to develop and discover a drug the entire admi pk talks ind is missing and only few company may have these capabilities rest in public domain it is totally missing no investment has gone to this people don't appreciate this that you know just having biological target engagement doesn't make you a drug it's a whole journey that happens so that neither the expertise is there nor infrastructure there and that is what is happening that we are into such a difficult situation so this virus is telling something very important that without investing in innovation and discovery 
rest of the industry is basically operating at 5 to 8% margin. How long you will operate? We have to go to the heart where the margins are 100 to 200%. Look at the profit Remdesivir must be, Gilead must be making. You can't even imagine the amount of profit they will be making because they are the owner of the intellectual property of discovering the drug. So I think this is something is important. And these are the ones which requires immediate attention from the public system and the private system both. That without innovation and discovery, although it takes time, I understand a lot of people are negative, you know, with all these negativities, all right, but that's the only route to create wealth and stay relevant in terms of these crises. So I, I think uh, uh, this is my last slide. I will thank you for inviting me here. And I have given perspective how CSR has contributed and will continue to contribute. You will keep on hearing more things from us. And I'm very pleased to be associated with this particular discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, actually, you updated us about the strategies and measures which are taken by CSR to contain COVID-19 with the help of government and with the help of industry, PPP model, all that thing. That was very informative. In fact, uh, we have a strategy at the uh, front also where soldiers are fighting and they have a strategy, similar strategy. The CSR is doing, you know, to contain this COVID-19, which has scared everyone globally, in fact. Uh, so that was wonderful uh, information, sir. And uh, the measures taken are really appreciable, especially when you raise the concern that it's a high time now to government to think uh, on ROI, uh, that is uh, return on investment, you know, which they have been raising, that what is the ROI on investing on science and technology, this was actually wonderful. And it's high time that everyone has to open their eyes and seriously think that how much investment is required on science and technology, especially when we have witnessing this. And it is not happening at the country level, it is happening at cross country levels. So that is high time and we are simply dependent on uh, imported things, you know, for so many things. This was wonderful, sir, and it has sensitized us and the seriousness of COVID-19 also. And uh, now if you permit, uh, we'll have a couple of questions uh, if time permits. Yeah. Can we start, sir? Yeah, and there is one question which has been asked. Can you suggest a sequence of medication for a home quarantine COVID patient? Yeah, so home quarantine COVID patient, now I think, of course, it's all should be under medical supervision, but there are options now. So now I think after a lot of controversy and a lot of this, I think in last three months, thanks to science, we are in a much better place, particularly the breakthrough that came from Oxford University recovery trial, the data on dexamethasone, I think that has made all that difference. So According to me, the only disruptive change that has happened in treatment regime so far is dexamethasone and prednisone. So if you talk to doctors, all over the world, doctors are saving many, many lives because of this intervention. And the, uh, the, the so, and other is this, despite all the criticism, hydroxychloroquine has a window of opportunity for people when they, when they are very early phase when virus is just entering and, you know, uh, hydroxychloroquine works with a very interesting mechanism that by modulating pH gradient, when virus is trying to get into from endocyte to endosomes and lysosome to then going to the, the ribosomes, right? So that's where there's a short window about that. And fortunately, the recovery trial on dexamethasone, they did one more recovery trial on hydroxychloroquine, which is published yesterday in, in I think, New England Journal of Medicine. And one thing they have conclusively said that on 600 patient trial data, that all the concern that were raised about hydroxychloroquine safety, absolutely there were no concern of the safety of hydroxychloroquine. And India is one of the countries which has used this drug and saved millions of life in the almost 40 to 50 years. Dr. Yadav will remember and I will remember when we were kids, you know, when you used to go to school, Morning, we used to, you, we were given one tablet of hydroxychloroquine every day to, because there was a time of malaria epidemic in the place. So people like us who are sitting with you, we have, we are alive, at least I'm alive because of hydroxychloroquine. I'm telling you, otherwise I would have died in childhood because of the malaria, right? So there are this, and uh, then there are, of course, the uh, uh, 
molecule like hydroxy this uh, colgi c uh, 6000 patient trial data uh, uh, jama has published a study it is really helping in the early phase of uh, Uh, basically maintaining the uh, pro inflammatory responses of inflammasome and il6 so there are couple of medication which are available which i am sure doctors will prescribe i cannot tell you exactly that you take this i that's unethical for me to tell you but there are we are in a much better place than one month ago i can tell you then the one one most disruptive uh, data came from oxford university trial because that was such a large trial 156 hospitals involved 6000 patients and they have put that data in public domain and i think that has made all the difference that i think first i am not too sure about remdesivir and febiparavir how good they are doctors are not really as yet convinced about it but dexa and prednisolone certainly are helping and hydroxychloroquine uh, that is where i am hopeful for sepsivac if the sepsivac comes and i think if we can really Uh, protect people from going into serious situation i think that will be a one intervention where we can really and i think the data that came from bcg trial data which is hinting towards i think the hypothesis that uh, dr kamar and i have been exchanging papers and papers and i think that hypothesis is being slowly slowly being validated that non specific management of innate response is a better way to deal with rather than you know going all the way to in fact yesterday uh, 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 new england journal of medicine has published a very beautiful commentary on this topic dr kamar and i will share with you that you know saying saying the same thing that that's that's the way we have to look at it yeah thank you doctor uh, uh, the uh, question is patients when you talked about sepsivac it is related to that patients who are critically ill in spite of giving steroids and other medicines can we try sepsivac at that time Yeah, yeah, we we can because the if we have to deal with a, a sort of a the cytokine what we call CRS syndrome that happens a lot of these particularly the IL six and others. I mean, if particularly the trial that is happening actually for the seriously ill patient, the phase two trial that is that we are doing is on those kind of patient. So I think uh, if they are uh, sort of a, we can slow down. their uh, movement from critical is you know, from the less critical stage to higher critical stage and use other interventions so i think this sepsivac can provide that window for doctors to intervene in terms of patient progressing faster so that i think that's that window available to them and i think i i can see the combination of dexa and this will make a whole lot of difference whole lot of difference with uh, because dexa will actually uh, done will will work through a different mechanism and uh, also it will provide some uh, anabolic uh, because basically dexa and prednisolone are for basically glucocorticoid and mineral corticoid balance so basically dexa is more towards glucocorticoid this is about more towards mineral corticoid so i think that is also important providing uh, body to more metabolic uh, strength for body to deal with this is a is a basically tilting the balance body is trying to go into overdrive to protect you now if you have to slow down that overdrive on one hand and slow down this virus replication process but when you are in second week of infection the, you are not dealing with virus you are dealing with immune system as simple as that so if you can protect yourself from your own immune system i think you can protect life 